Hey everyone, Dr. Yi here. In this lesson, we're going to go back to the science review instead of the reading review. And that's because I got a comment the other day. Um, this student got a question on bone repair, which was very unexpected because bone repair is not mentioned in the study manual. So I never talk about this topic, but it looks like you may run into a question on the healing of bones. So today we're just gonna look at that process real quick. Now, before we take a closer look at the steps in bone repair, we're just gonna go through the different types of fractures real quick. Now, there are different ways to classify fractures. For instance, the fractures can be described in terms of the location, uh, in terms of the nature of the break, or you know what the fracture looks like. Um, but because this is a topic that I think is probably not gonna be on T's, so we're just gonna look at some of the kind of general common classifications. So first, position of the bone ends after fracture. If the end of the bone retain the normal position, that is a non-displaced fracture. If the ends of the bone are out of normal alignment, then that's a displaced fracture. In terms of a completeness of the break, if the bone is broken through, that's a complete fracture. If not, that's an incomplete fracture. Now, as to whether the bone ends penetrate the skin, if it does penetrate the skin, that's an open or compound fracture. If not, that's a closed or simple fracture. Before we go over the process of bone repair, uh, let's do a quick refresher of the common osseous tissues and what the, the bone looks like, the gross anatomy of the bone, especially a long bone. So we have uh, two types of osseous tissues or bone tissues. The external smooth layer, which is very dense, is called a compact bone, right? When you look at this diagram of a long bone, this part, the external layer, that's the compact bone. The other osseous tissue is called a spongy bone. So the spongy bone has, and it's made up of these honeycomb kind of needle-like structures called the trabeculae. So you can see um, this is spongy bone. A spongy bone is internal. It's not smooth. Uh, it has trabeculae. Now the open space in spongy bone, uh, this open space is filled with a bone marrow in living bones. It can be yellow bone marrow or it can be red bone marrow. A couple of structures. This is the end of the bone. You can imagine there's another end. So that's epiphysis, right? The end that's closer to the trunk of the body, that's proximal epiphysis. And then the other end, this is going to be the distal epiphysis. And in the middle, you have diaphysis, which is the shaft of the lung bone. There is connective tissue on the outside of the compact bone, and that's known as periosteum. You can see it's a, a layer of connective tissue. There are in general four steps in bone repair, which is shown in the diagram here. The first step uh, is the formation of a hematoma and then a fibrocollagenous callus, which is a soft callus will form. The next step, this soft callus will be converted into a bony callus, right, of a spongy bone. And eventually the bone will be remodeled and the fracture will be healed, okay? So let's look at each step more closely. Now, when the fracture happens, uh, we know that there are blood vessels going through bones, right? So those blood vessels will be torn and, and the bone will hemorrhage. So hematoma will start to form. The hematoma is really just a mass of clotted blood. So that's the first step. And the second step, so this is where the, the repair really begins. Right? Uh, capillaries will grow into hematoma. So new blood vessels will grow into the uh, site of damage will be phagocytic cells that will clean the debris, right? There will be broken tissues there. So the phagocytic cells will uh, basically engulf those debris and um, break them down. And there will be uh, all kinds of cells moving in. Uh, fibroblasts will produce collagen fibers. And that's the same type of cells in the skin that make collagen fibers. And these collagen fibers will connect the, to the broken ends of the bone. And there will be 
uh, conduit blasts, based on the name, you know that these cells will produce cartilaginous matrix, right? And lastly, there will be osteoblasts, which you know, they, those are bone forming cells, right? So they will make spongy bone. So basically this is where the reconstruction really starts with different kinds of cells, different kinds of workers, right? Um, doing their jobs. Next, the soft callus, the, the fibrocartilaginous callus will be converted to a bony callus, right? So you can start to see that the, the osseous tissue starts to form, right? And uh, mainly the trabeculae will appear. Remember, that's the main uh, kind of structure in spongy bone. And this soft callus will be converted to a hard bony callus. Next, the uh, bone remodeling. So uh, this is going to continue for several months. The bony callus will be remodeled and um, the, the outcome will be, you know, this is gonna be very, very similar to what the bone looked like before the fracture. So during the repair process, there will be some access material, right? On the um, diaphysis exterior or in the medullary cavity. So all that access material will be removed. And also this part is the compact bone, right? So this is, is the new compact bone, which is laid down to reconstruct the walls of the diaphysis. So that's the, the four steps in bone repair. So hopefully now you're familiar with uh, what's happening in each step. So if you see a question, even though you may not remember the exact information, uh, you know, all this kind of knowledge, the familiarity with the steps, uh, hopefully will help you select the correct answer. Good job, everyone. You just learned a little bit more, more prepared for the teeth. This might be the last video before for the holiday break. So if I don't make another video, I wish you a happy holiday and enjoy the time with a family and friends. Bye.